right, five minutes after 10 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this rainy Thursday morning. Just a little while ago, we had a brief conversation with a doctor about uh, the bad cholesterol versus the good cholesterol. It turns out that the bad cholesterol numbers can be reduced by simple exercise, like maybe golf. So let's talk golf. We have in the studio Jim Beckett. He's here with Don. Am I right? Don Nix. Don, Don Nix. Thank you for reminding me of the name. Uh, and uh, the phone calls during this show are very much a part of the show. So remember, you're invited to call during this show. And it is Thursday, March 6th. If you need to know if you're listening to a live show, the number is 622-9622. That is the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline. Jim Beckett and Don Hicks. Good morning to both of you. Good morning, Larry. How are you doing? You sound bad, but you said you feel good. I feel good. I uh, had a voice change. <laughs> <laughs> but it'll be back. Is that right? It probably lets me know I talk too much. You know, we, were, we did this thing on apples this morning, and for some reason, the Adam's apple came up. And if you have laryngitis, they say if you massage your Adam's apple, it'll get better. You might want to give it a try. I have a watermelon <laughs> apple. <laughs> a watermelon apple. Hmm. Uh, is today a good day? Could, would you golf in the rain? No. There's two kinds of golfers when it rains. The true blood and guts golfer, uh -huh. who's not going to let anybody uh, slow their golf down, and they learn to grip the club more securely where it won't slip. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. Then you have the smart golfer who gets out of the rain. <laughs> well, it just doesn't. Well, if you have, if you have your heart set on it, it's going to. This isn't big, big heavy rain. See, see, this would be considered a wonderful day at the British Open. And then, why is that? Because they don't have many sunny days. Oh, okay. The wind blows, okay. it okay. rains, and the British Open, it normally rains somewhere between two and four times during a round of golf. And some of the rains are pretty hard. And that land over there percolates so well that our golf courses over here generally don't so well, so you have to stop play because of damage to the golf course. Over there, they can have a monsoon and you still could play as far as the condition of the golf course. And a lot of people take those trips are always surprised because they're expecting those nice sunny days that we all like, and their weather's not that good. Oh, wow. Do, do we have the, the upper hand when it comes to technology that is used for training golfers? Like, you've got some new stuff I'm, wait, I'm anxious to hear about. The new stuff we have is beyond description, and it's seldom am I stumped for words. We will be announcing at the next show. Oh, no. I have to wait another show, huh? Well... Uh, I'm hung up because some of the equipment, because it's expensive, they don't inventory much. Uh, so I'm first on the list when they get it from the manufacturer. So a lot of companies do that, you know, because they don't want to have money sitting still. So tease us a little bit. What so, will it help teach? How will it help teach? It can make you a competent golfer in one hour. <laughs> That's how wonderful it is. Wow. You will have 100% understanding of cause and effect, and you will process with your own thoughts how to do that because you're going to see the picture, a three-dimensional picture. You're going to see what caused the ball to go where it went, and you'll be able to adjust that in less than an hour. And it's phenomenal to watch it. The other thing it does is it tells Don and I the exact piece of equipment that's going to give you the best chance for the most success. And that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be more money. It could be the equipment you have that just gets either balanced, retrofitted, oh, really? okay. or overhauled. So we're going to have something really phenomenal that's never been in the golf business in my career. We're going to be able to take and do three things to your own existing club for a pittance of money in comparison to what a new set would cost. Oh, wow and make you better instantaneously. We're gonna have three OEM companies as original equipment manufacturer at brand names for the better part because so our society is somewhat brand name oriented. So we're gonna have those brand names. And then we have joined forces with one of the smartest people in the golf business. For 15 years, he's been putting this package together to build the world's best golf club 100% personalized for less money than the average golf club you buy in a store or a pro shop. So we're going to have three things you can do to benefit your golf. And this, uh, so you've seen the simulator. The simulator theater will now have a launch monitor, which will tell us 28 things visually mm. that you can adjust to make the golfer hit a better shot without changing their swing. 
So the golfer now may find a way to get better without opting for expensive lessons. Or if their equipment's good and they're not doing well, that means then the operator needs some help. So it's going to identify like an MRI, an X-ray, and a blood test exactly where the areas oh, are. Wow. Yeah. They can make you a better golfer with less time and less expense. It's going to be phenomenal. So who's the easier <coughs> the, who's the easier student? The person who's never golfed or the person who's been golfing all of his life? Great question. The reason the golfer is difficult is they've tried to figure it out themselves. They've either watched the Golf Channel, right. read golf books, or got a CD. Those three sources have to speak in generic terms. So there's no way two people are going to swing exactly the same. Okay. Flexibility, okay. strength, okay. athleticism, age, balance, all that stuff goes into the mix. So it's, it's generic information that basically fits no one. So the person gets all confused and develops a lot of bad habits. When Don and I take a new student on, we interview them to see what we need to do. If they've done this process by getting themselves all out of whack, we spend 80% of our time helping them break the habits and only 20% of the time help them hit a better shot. So see, you were very easy for me because you didn't bring any baggage with you. Nothing, right. I showed you the simple way to get the ball to go better. You said, that's it? <laughs> So it worked. <laughs> you, you make it seem easy. All right. So, so if I've learned before how to, well, well, let me put it this way. If I was your student before, yep. and now you uh, expose me to the new equipment that'll help me learn, do I then learn something and then I say, oh, there it is. And then you say to me, I tried to show you that a year ago. I mean, uh, in other words, is the, is the teacher better or is the student better? What's, or is it both? Does the equipment actually help the teacher as well? The equipment, the easiest way to explain the equipment is let's look at the equipment you're using right here. Can we give you less equipment and you do the same job? No. Do you need fancier equipment? No. You've got the equipment that gets the job done. Right. right so right. the equipment is a subjective thing. But if it's holding you back, you could take lessons forever and not get better. So it well, takes your true. thought process, that's it takes true. your energy source, the body, it takes the equipment. And yet, yeah, that's a combination. So one person's going to say, oh, no, it's the Indian, not the arrow. The next person's going to say, oh, no, it's the arrow, not the Indian. They're both correct from their perception. Huh, that's interesting. Well, I could, <coughs> I could imagine, let's, let's say instead of talking about golf, you were talking about piano lessons, okay? Yeah. And there's somebody out there that's been taking piano lessons since he was six, and now he's 60, okay? And he hears you say, my new equipment can help you learn piano in an hour. That guy's going to say, oh, come on. I've been spending my whole life learning this thing. The difference there in the pianos, I would say, is the quality of the sound more than anything. Is that true? You're the music guy. It, it, a, a good piano has a better sound. Good guitar has a better sound. See, the yes. golf club has multitudes of things. I'd refer, refer to it more like a car. The golf club has length. It has weight. It has shaft speed. It has shaft torque. It has balance. So, I mean, it has a lot of things that's, that could affect it. For an example, you could never play anywhere near to your capability with a regular piece of golf equipment because when they make that equipment, they don't know the user. They make it shorter than standard, mm. weaker than standard, a smaller grip, less power, and less speed. Well, a guy you're young as you and your size, your easiest swing is going to test that club far more than, let's say, someone... 70 years old, it swings half your speed. So there's no way you could use the same piece of equipment and have it work. That's what the machine allows you to test and come to your own conclusion. Wow. We yeah. don't sell it. We show it. You test it. The machine tells us how good we do. So it's either you like the club, it feels good, it's fitted, and it produces a better shot. That's all you want to know. The, I think I know the answer to this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway so that the listeners hear it, and maybe I don't know the answer. But let me just in, interject the phone number because we want the audience to participate. If you want to call, the number is 622-9622, and Jim and Don will answer your questions. Uh, that would be uh, Jim Beckett and Don Hicks, who are in the studio right now. 622-9622, by the way, is the WOCA Climate Control Source Hotline. So the question I think I know the answer to is, does the equipment go out with you 
to the golf course? Does the new stuff go out with you, or do does the training take place indoors? We can take it indoor or outdoor. Really? The, the equipment that analyzes you actually can go with you outside. Yes, sir. It's, it's not any bigger than a small briefcase, but it has Doppler radar and camera. Wow. And camera and sound and picture. So uh, uh, in order to understand, am I watching later on? Do I watch a video like in your office or something? Yes, on a 55-inch flat screen. <laughs> okay. We don't want people to have to put their glasses on to see. Don, how? Oh, Don Nix. I'm sorry, Nix. Don, how long have you been golfing? All my life. I started at the age of 13. Have you tried the the new stuff that that uh, Jim is talking about? Yes, I had recently at the PGA show in Orlando, and uh, it, it was phenomenal. Did we, it improve your game? Well, as a matter of fact, it showed me immediately one item really? that I was doing that I was unaware that I was doing. And that was causing the ball to not go where he wanted it to go. So the golfer thinks it's all them. Oh, wow. That's interesting. So this is selling and not selling. This is identifying and clarifying. So when he did that test, he kind of thought something, went over and looked at the data, and he said, wow, there it is. Can you help us understand what that was? What was that one thing? It was the track of the swing. I was coming uh, a little too square, not to get too technical, but I needed to come a little more to the inside out at four degrees rather than about a one and a half degree. Uh, it was the track of the club coming from wow. the backswing. And that could cause the ball area to go straight or as much as 30 yards crooked. Okay, now I'm going to interject something else into this conversation that's exactly in line with what you're saying. I watched this video on how we send things to Mars. The, the way we send things to Mars is we launch a rocket, and it, it, it has a, a, a propulsion thing, a rocket, in other words, only for a short while. It just lines it up with Mars, and then it turns off, and the rest of the way, it's all momentum. Correct. It just keeps going. They've, they've got to know exactly how to get it to Mars, though. So it's kind of the same thing. Very similar because... When you take your backswing, whatever path you come back to the ball is an angle and a curve. So whatever, once it leaves your club, it's on its own, just like this thing going to Mars. So all you got to do is get, <laughs> on, get, it, get it on path and hit it square, and you're going to be successful. It's much, much simpler than people think. The golf world has made the golf swing seem very complicated. It's not. It can be very simple. Well, what this equipment does is takes people's opinion out of it. It's only deal in fact. So it will identify and tell you exactly, with a picture or with data, how you can make the ball Very, better. So, Don, when you, when you found out the problem you were having, you changed your angle or something? And Instantly. Instantly. Yes. And you went out and, and you said, you know, my ball always drifts to the left or to the right, and now it's more in line? Because I learn things visually uh, better than by reading or right, anything else right. that's the way that's the way my personality and my mind works that whenever i saw this i was able to adjust at the backswing set the club at a different position at the top of my backswing and then that automatically kept me when i have knowledge of where that should be wow and i can see it in other people but i can't see it in me because i can't see myself so wow. other so than I on video and I'd been helping Don do this, and so what it did is it clarified communication. I had told him before best I could, but it wasn't crystal clear in his mind. So this, this equipment allows you to develop a more efficient perception so that you can help yourself with our guidance. So we don't have to be so perfect. We don't have to worry about communication anymore. It's phenomenal stuff. And incidentally, your listeners, when they mention you will be able to go through this process at no charge. Really? Now, if they need to get something done and we can prove it's going to have the validity, then yes, but they can go through oh, wow. and have this diagnosis done. And that's shameful marketing. They're going to tell They're other gonna, people. Right. So everybody wins. Nothing wrong with that. Is, is, so is that already or do we have to wait a week or two? Well, I've got three pieces of equipment that's in route, supposedly. Okay. And I've got about another week on the building. Right. The building is uh, going to be a lot different than what you saw in the past. Much more efficient. So mention WLCA and get the, <coughs> the whole thing for free. Yep. 
Uh, Robin handed me a note. It's a question somebody called on the office line, and it asks, can I use my mom's clubs that she used in the 1960s, or should I get new ones? Uh, seldom am I stumped for words. <laughs> if I say the answer, it's my opinion. I would prefer that person come down ah, to the shop at okay. no charge, and we can prove the answer, but we need that person. And because the clubs. Because ten different, yes, ten different people could get those clubs and get ten different answers. So I'm not hedging on the answer. I would be making a guess. That would make sense then. That so if they come down, the proof can be proven to them with no opinion. That's what this is all about. So and the, that's why I love it. If the person who asked the question inherited mom's exact stature and everything... <coughs> then maybe it's more likely that they would work as opposed to if they inherited dad's stature, which may have been drastically different, right? That would be the phys physical part of it. Right. But now we go to the swinging part of it. Oh, For okay. an example, that because of my knowledge of clubs, I can pick up any club and make it work. That's because I've learned to alter my swing to fit the equipment. When the average person does that, that means their swings are inconsistent. So what we would like to have is the equipment fit our swing, not fit our person. Oh, and really? this is what this tells us. It tells us about the swing speed, the swing arc, the angles, everything. So if you and I went to play golf <coughs> and you said, let's do something different. Let's switch clubs. You play with mine and I play with yours. You would not be at a disadvantage because you know how to adjust for the club. I would be because I'm used to my clubs. Correct. It's like getting oh, a wow. rental car where you can't get the seat right. The mirrors won't turn where you want to turn them. Right. See, when we get in a rental car or a strange car, we immediately fix some things from our personal opinion that we like and prefer to operate that car efficiently and comfortably. So a car has a whole lot less things to adjust than a golf club does. People think a golf club, because it's just an innate stick, it has multiple things that people don't understand. And the golf world doesn't want you to know that, because then they would have the problem of trying to explain it and explain all those differences. So naturally, they're not going to expose that. This exposes every iota that will alter your performance in golf. And I've been wanting this machine for 30 years, and it finally is here. But it was developed for radar use, for military use, and space. Really? So the unit I wow. have originally was $100,000. Now it's only $12,000. Wow. So my reference to the Mars mission is appropriate. Appropriate. <laughs> or apropos, whatever the word this is. This is Doppler radar, high-speed camera, and a software that is unexplainable. It's just amazing. You get to see it wow. and prove it. Wow. I'm, I'm more excited about golf than I've ever been because now I can help that golfer for sure. Before I thought I could. Now yeah. I know I can. I, one of the things I always think <coughs> when we do the show, Jim, is that talking about what you do at the Golf College is probably the best message in the context of a radio show. I mean, we can talk about Tiger Woods or any other famous golfer, and it's, it's fun, maybe. It's kind of like fun talking about celebrities in any field, right? Yeah. But it doesn't really benefit us. It's just kind of chit-chat, you know what I mean? Correct. But I, but I think the Golf College really does, for the golfer, uh, offer an opportunity to... Um, be better and Don is a great example of somebody who uh, checked his ego at the door so to speak because I mean you could have taken the attitude Don the way you said you know what I've done this I don't need any equipment but you uh, allowed yourself to be you know to be subjected to the opinion of the equipment regardless of a golfer's ability we're always trying to improve even the top golfers everybody is so I wonder if you put somebody who's a top golfer in there. Not, not that you're not, but I mean, would, would Tiger Woods see, oh, I'm making a mistake? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> this equipment was available to the tour in 1999. Really? Between 1990 and 2003 is when the biggest revolution took place on tour. The tour used to be in four brackets, the top 25%, second 25%, third and fourth. Now the tour is two brackets. All of them are good now. People you never heard of are winning tournaments now because they had exposure to this. Oh, really? Ten years ago. We have a couple of names that surface uh, in the high schools, local golfers who are young and still in high school. 
Uh, I don't know their names. Maybe you guys do, uh, so I apologize for that. But do they have this equipment available to them in the school? No. No. The reason they don't is when you're in elementary stages of golf, there are some basic things you can learn just as well without it. It's after you can swing the club and make contact with the ball that this is revolutionary. It'll revolutionize golf. Have it's going to change everything, and it's going to get a lot more people to play a little better, enjoy it more, and that'll perpetuate the golf business as a whole. How much would it cost for, let's say, a, a teenager that's wanting to be really good at golf to, to attend the golf college? Is it, is it a fair question for me to ask? Sure. If a person's really serious about golf, we offer a 20-hour program, and it's called uh, Golf College. You're buying a semester of hours or a quarter of hours, what have you. Okay. And you use the hours as effectively as they need be. Well, it might be you might come in for a 20-minute session or a two-hour session. You don't come in for a program 30-minute lesson or an hour lesson. That's the two things that's sold, 30-minute lessons and hour lessons. Time is never the issue. What if we're having a lesson with you in 10 more minutes, we could solidify everything we've talked about, yeah, right. hit eight more balls, and you get it. So what we want to have happen with everybody we visit is they leave there with some ideas that are clarified, that they understand mentally, and at least one physical thing, a little key, that gets the ball going better. So really looking at two things. How can we get in touch with what's really going to work for us? And those are intangibles. They're not specifics. You can't write them in a book. Huh. <coughs> so this is going to be great for I, everybody. I wonder how many spouses, I'm guessing wives, but maybe it's the husband who doesn't golf. His wife does, or maybe she, he doesn't, she doesn't. And they will come to you and say, look, you know, I don't go because I'm embarrassed because I don't want to, you know, I feel like I'm going to slow everybody down. Uh, is, is part of the golf college, in addition to learning how to do it, is it also learning the jargon of the game? Golf just, college touch bases everything. We yeah. uh, we offer a program to do nothing but talent development. A person has lots of talent, so we focus on that talent. We have a program where the person has no talent, no physical abilities to speak of, no athleticism. So there's a program to have that person develop their skills and play golf and have fun. There's no two people exactly the same. So everybody really wants the same thing. They'd like to get the ball hit. Right. They'd like to get it to go straight. They'd like to get it to go further. And if they play golf, they'd like to score. So we have a separate program for all that stuff so that the person can start at any starting point, give us a goal they're trying to attain, and so that it's a personal package just for that. So nobody else might take that. That's partly what we do that's so different. It's the individual is the catalyst takes the individual to get anything done. We've just found the resources to help them get it done more efficient, quicker, and easier than going the conventional way. Right. You know, again, I'm going to compare it to music, if you don't mind. If, if, I, were, if I were a music teacher and I had a student come to me and, wanted, and said, you know, I just want to learn because I, it, it looks like it's fun. I want to learn it for the fun of it. I, I think I would have... Maybe the same attitude, I'm not so sure, in my teaching approach, as if a student came to me and said, you know what, I want to be the next Elvis Presley. I want to be the next, you know, Mozart or something. You know, I might say, holy mackerel, I don't know if I can give you that. <laughs> but you could, Larry. Yeah? You could get them on, you could get them organized and get them programmed to pursue that avenue to get there. You, of course, could do that. I'd rather have you do that for me than somebody else. <laughs> well, so you do have that ability. Yeah. Well, this equipment makes makes us true experts, and makes us quit guessing, and we don't want to guess. And we can help the person quit guessing. They all know. When we had this demonstration done, and Don was the uh, guinea pig, so to speak, it was down at the PGA show, and we had a crowd watching us. They watched our, us getting our presentation. Really? The crowd. Because we had the questions. And where was the, that? Is that in Orlando? Yes, sir. Every year. Yeah. So that's, is that where you were last week? Or, I mean, no, that was week. in January. Okay. Okay. So see, Don right now is an expert in every aspect of the golf business, and yet he's still a student. Jim Beckett is pretty good also, but I'm still a student. Really? That's, 
so, of course. So did you find something that well, you were doing? Well, I want to hit better. Did you find something that you were doing wrong? Like Don found something you Oh, doing? I've got a lot of list of things that could be improved. What were you about. doing wrong? Balance is one thing because of my feet. Okay. So there's an alternative motion that I can do to circumvent that. If there's things you can't fix, you want to find a way to circumvent, adjust, modify. What's the Marines say? What do they say? <laughs> I'm not sure where are you going with Improvise. Improvise. Oh. <laughs> Always improvise. We, we're right. not cookie cutter teachers. Right, right. You come to us and you have a mental skill right. and a physical skill. You have a learning curve mentally and physically. So if we present information to you that you understand, it's clear, you'll come up with better ideas than we will. We'll help develop you makes sense, your yeah. way, which you don't have to remember what we say. Uh, we'll be having open houses for this. We'll be having demos for this. We'll be having fit out, fitting days and exploration days. And just to see, see all of this, my biggest fear is how are we going to accommodate when the word gets out. And obviously, if you had a large crowd at your demonstration, it's, you're going to have the same thing at the golf course, it right? It is going to revolutionize the golf business. That's not Jim Beckett saying that. It's this process and this equipment is going to help every person from tour player to beginner. And if you want to benefit from it, <coughs> if you just mention WOCA, you get it for free. You get the, you get the orientation wow. and the visit for free. Wow. And where would they go? Is it down at the... It would be at the golf college, and that's down at the golf course. You all, we went to the golf course. And that's Spruce Creek? It's at Spruce Creek South. Uh -huh. um, that's just north of the villages, about a half a mile on 441. Our personal numbers are 352 uh -huh. 470 3876. Uh -huh. And we've now put in a phone for communication with take, takes a, a calls. Uh -huh. Our business phone is 352 307 6880. And that will just take your message, and we will get back to you. All right, call us if you need those numbers repeated. Uh, Jim Beckett, you've, uh, it looks like you're really struggling with your voice, so you, you made it through a show. I feel a lot better than I sound. <laughs> uh, and Don Nix, I apologize for saying your name wrong earlier. Right. Thank you for coming in and for making this show so great. My pleasure. Happy oh. to be here. And it always goes so quick, too. I, I look at the clock and I'm thinking, okay, i got to get that music going again. Uh, <laughs> seems like I just turned it off for the intro. Uh, thank you both. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Don. Welcome. All right. We'll take a little break. We'll be right back.